Real estate space on dashboards is super important. The more gadgets you get, the more difficult it is to get them all in one good looking dashboard. Finding the balance between having a great and good looking dashboard and being able to control all of your devices is a fine art. I spent hours trying to get the right dashboard balance. In this video, I'm gonna show you four space saving tips for your dashboard in Home Assistant. If you're brand new to Home Assistant, check the link in the description down below to jumpstart your journey with my free Home Assistant course. And now, let's roll the intro. First up is a custom card called Swipe. You'll find this card in the Home Assistant's community store called Hacks. And the way it works is that you can have multiple cards so you can swipe across. So you can see that I'm doing it right here to get different uh, displays. Now this works really well with a mobile so you can just use your finger to uh, scroll across so i have multiple cameras and i can just basically swipe across and then swipe again to uh, add as many cameras as i want to save space instead of having like eight cameras displayed constantly i may just want to swipe across easily so let's go three dots edit dashboard and let's look at how this is actually built now if you're starting from scratch click add card and search for manual and once you're at manual, here you can type in some custom code. Now, the code that you can see over here, which you'll find available in my blog, link down below. And you can see the certain types of configurations we can actually pick. Let's just ignore the parameters for now. And let's look at the actual cards. So the card section over here is going to allow you to add a number of cards uh, down the line. So each card starts with a dash type. So this is the, so line from line 10 to line 14, you actually get the first uh, one, which is displayed as a light for the iMac lamp. The second one is actually a grid card. So it's really cool because you can combine grid cards with normal lamps and you can see the indentation starts from here and ends here. So this is grid, uh, say space number two which is reflected by these temperature sensors, which I've added in just as some example. Third one, you can see starts from line 31, goes down to line 46, and we can see it displayed over here. And again, we have more options. So we have this time, we have buttons, but it's similar configuration as uh, grid cards. And at the end, I'm also using a different custom card, which is the mini graph card to display uh, temperatures in this way so you can see this nicely fills up the whole space now the fine balancing act you're going to need to do if I scroll across there's a little bit of a gap so ID that's not ideal because unused space so it depends on how you design this if you can get to the point where they're all looking super good a bit like this one over here with the camera that works really well to show you the camera is even more simpler it's got just got the picture entity and then it's exactly the same um, and then you can uh, have like whatever camera you have. So to actually, the, why I, I think code is really good in this example is that you can easily copy and paste. So if I copy from line 14 to line 17 and I can just add it in and I can add another copy of the exactly the same thing. And at this point over here, I would just change the camera to uh, whatever camera it is, right? So I've got prompted different options here so I can add the camera that I want to do and that's an easy way to add a third camera. When you add this custom card from the Home Assistant Community Store, you will have the GitHub link and in there you'll find all of the uh, features that you can turn on and turn off. So let me navigate to Hacks, go to Front End and then here I'm going to search for it. Swipe card, you can find it over here. If you're adding it new, you can click Add this add button, explore and download repositories and add it in that way. Open up the swipe card, um, click on the GitHub link of the actual user that created it, Bram. And if you look over here, we can find his repositories. And one of the top repositories that he's contributed is a swipe card. So we've got the actual link to the swipe card. And over here, you can find some more information about the parameters. My advice with these sort of thing is to sort of play around with the values. So just change them and see how that actually behaves. So if I change this, for example, to true, now you can see that the actual feature has disappeared. So you wouldn't know it's there unless you've uh, tried to swipe. The second space saving feature is the image switcher. That's what I'm calling the image switcher. So the example you can see over here, I have two logos. I have a Netflix logo and a Plex logo, and they're just rotating 
on a uh, basis. So you could use this for family photos or anything that you want to display on a dashboard that's going to rotate. Now, the way this is built, let me show you. This is actually a, a button card and the button card has a specific ratio. It's one by one ratio, but the actual logic is the extra styles that you can see over here. Now, the background image is what you're going to need to configure when you copy and paste this code. The local is indicated by your www folder and your netflix.png is the actual file that you've added in here. So what I'm doing is at 0% keyframe, I'm adding a PNG, 25% I'm adding the same PNG, and then 50, 75%, 100%. So this is the sort of the loop that this is going through. And you can add as many images and change the percentages uh, as you wish. If you've never added images before, just use the file editor add-on, go to the folder section, scroll right down and check if you have this www folder. If you've got it, great. If you haven't, you can just click this plus button and add the folder in there. At this point, you've got the upload file button and here you can upload any PNG. So rename it appropriately, upload it. And then at that point, you can use that slash local uh, reference in your dashboard. The third space saving tip for today is the state switch. So the state switch works in a way, so imagine this is like a menu, this is the way I'm using it now to just to demonstrate it. So I could have different zones, I can have a ground uh, and I could have a first, uh, first floor for example zone and you can see this over here is changing. So how this is achieved, let me show you. It, go and edit your dashboard like I showed you and here we have two cards. The main card that's doing everything is this card over here. So let's edit it. So I'm using the custom state switch, again, from the Home Assistant Community Store, like I showed you for the swipe card. You need to pick an entity. Now this entity is the, the thing that controls the state. So in my example, it's an input uh, selector, but it could be anything, it's a helper, but it could be anything that you want. That is going to be the uh, fundamental thing. So let's say you, if you, if you are using a motion sensor, then you would use the motion sensor. If the motion sensor is on, then you're going to display um, whatever cards and if it's off. So you need to know what states the actual entity is going to assume. So line three, we have states. At this point, we're declaring the different states that the uh, input selector has. I have two states, as you saw from the dropdown. One is ground, one is first. And actually, everything is wrapped under uh, either one of the state or the other. Be careful with upper cases because if you put upper cases, it needs to match the exact state. And here I just put a vertical stack. This could be anything you want. And the same for the grid card. So what you can do is, is you can build things out yourself. So let's say you want to go, uh, go add and you're going to go grid card and you've got uh, two columns and you want to add two buttons and then you want to go plus and add another button. If we go click on show code editor, we can actually get all of this code, copy it in, and then go back to our uh, state switch and we can add the code appropriately and paste it in under the uh, section over here. Now, the second part of this dashboard is simply the input selector and uh, having it there so it's easy to select. Now, the cool thing with the state switch is you don't really have to have an input selector, it will still work and the input selector can be on a different dashboard or it could be on no dashboard at all. So this will uh, basically dynamically switch. So you could have, for example, a whole dashboard, a night and a day version. So if you had a day version and a night and depending on a sensor, you could just switch your entire dashboard with this logic if everything was basically written under this custom state switch. The fourth one that we're gonna be looking at today is the conditional card. Now the conditional card very similar to the state switch. The big advantage with the conditional card is that it's a standard Home Assistant card. So you don't need a Home Assistant community stuff. You don't wanna add a custom stuff from the community, then the um, conditional card is for you. It's also a simpler version of the state uh, switch. And the way it works is quite simple. We have a condition and a card. If the condition is true, then the card will uh, display. If the condition is not true, the card will not display. Whereas the with the state switch, we had uh, two different states and it would display different things based on the state. This one is basically an on and off scenario. Also, you can have uh, states equals to 
or not equal to and you can also add multiple entities and if you add multiple entities be aware that all conditions need to be fulfilled for this to actually work so simply just try it out uh, turn off the lamp uh, everything is off turn it on and it magically appears so another space saving tip now over to you i want to know from you what space saving tips you can recommend and if you see a cool tip remember to upvote that comment and remember also to like the comment and subscribe to the channel to see many more tips like this one i have two awesome dashboard videos to leave you one video over here is going to show you how you can auto generate a dashboard thanks to Dwayne's dashboard and a video over here will actually show you how you can build a cool dashboard for your phone or tablet yourself so i hope you'll enjoy it see you in the next one ciao